Good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass on this 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. We extend a warm welcome to all who may be visiting today. If you're looking for a parish community, we would be happy to have you become a part of our parish family. Please check that your cell phone is off as we're about to begin Holy Mass with hymn number 417, Church of God, Elect and Glorious. Exceptional. We'll be done before we start. The church, church is, is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water. heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride with his own blood he bought her and for her life he died elect from every nation yet one or Charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace and Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. There is a penetrating question in the gospel tonight. Asked of Peter, and in the midst of so much tragedy in our world, so many abominations, asked of us, who do you say that I am? Who do people say that I am? My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries in which we enter into the identity of God. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. You lead us to fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, 
O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Thank you. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Romans. 
Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Unless one is totally ignorant of anything going on within the world, this has certainly been a tremendously overwhelming and devastating week. The genocide continues. The choice continues to be given to people from Iraq and Syria to either convert to an extremist interpretation of Islam or to face death. And so in droves, people are being displaced from their homelands, nations that since the earliest century have been Christian, have been places where the Eucharist has been held high and even died for. The news of the senseless murder of the innocent James Foley just adds to the pain and perhaps because he is so close to us, it makes us pay attention to the hundreds and thousands of people who are losing their lives day in and day out. The crucial question, who do you say that I am? Right here in our own country, the news is filled from Oklahoma City. There are a group of people who say, you know who you are? You're the one we want to avoid. You're the one we're fighting against. You're the power of good that we want to eradicate. They are the Satanists who over and over and over again are bringing the Black Mass, which is an abomination against the celebration of the Eucharist that has as its heart an act of terrible desecration of Christ himself in the Eucharist. Who do you say that I am? You are the one 
that we want to have Satan be victorious over. And stupid people throughout our country go are going out of curiosity or taking interest as though this were some kind of sideshow. But it unleashes the power of hell. Don't kid yourself. If you believe in the reality of good and the power of good, you wouldn't be in this church if you didn't. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you there's a reality of evil in hell. It isn't Halloween stuff. It isn't make-believe. And because we don't see it, Satan is ruling. Satan is destroying marriages and family life. Satan is doing it through the internet, through pornography. Satan is doing it through watered-down values, through a mentality that says, I'm okay and you're okay. I was so proud of a young man that I had the privilege of being in seminary with, who is now the Archbishop of Oklahoma City. Archbishop Paul Coakley has gotten a large legal firm to take out a lawsuit against those Satanists who recently this week announced that they have a consecrated host, and so the Black Mass that is scheduled to be occurring in Oklahoma City will be real. The lawsuit against them is that they are in the possession of something that was stolen. There is no way someone can get the Eucharist unless they take it from a church or they slip it out of a communion line against the intent of those who have custody over that great gift. It is the church that creates the Eucharist. It is the church that must guide the Eucharist and protect it. I think it's pretty sad. I remember saying to the high school kids in my parish when I was teaching, who do you think, out of all the people in the world, who do you think understand the most who that is in that tabernacle? Who that is that comes on that altar? Who that is we receive in Holy Communion? Who do you think? And a few of the kids say, oh, priests, nuns, devout little old ladies. I say, no, Satanists. Because many Catholics act like they don't know who that is. Satanists know, and they'll go to any extreme, because at the heart of the Black Mass is the desecration, not of a piece of bread, but of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that this terrible act will wake up Catholics everywhere to reappreciate the value of the Eucharist and of Holy Mass. And to act upon that and not simply pray for that, you'll notice in the bulletin that in October we will be doing a four-session program, first of all explaining this diabolical power that's at work, and then going through the Mass and hoping, hopefully leading us all to a deeper appreciation. Number two, I am asking you to take seriously Eucharistic adoration in this parish, to counter this act of blasphemy and disregard. Every Thursday, the Blessed Sacrament is exposed for adoration. Beginning September 11th, we continue to expand the day, as it explains in the bulletin, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. at St. Catherine. I have signed up lists right here. In order to have the Blessed Sacrament exposed for anybody to come at any time, and I hope all of you make that time, but in order to do that, we have to be sure that there will be an, a never-ending presence. And so some of you can commit to a weekly appointment with the Lord. Just like you commit to an appointment to have your, your hair done or your nails done or to get to the gym or to do that. Well, you know what, ladies? The hair's going to fall out anyway. You know what, guys? Everything's going to droop anyway. No matter how much you work it out or comb it or tease it or paint it or tuck it. Wherever you tucked it, it's going to drop. And people are going to wonder, what's she carrying around behind her? Nice image, huh? But you get what I'm saying? We do all that stuff. Well, how about saying, you know what, yeah, I can make a weekly appointment every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 11, or 1 to 2, or 3 to 4, or I can eat dinner a little later and do it from 5 to 6. I can come before the Lord. I can sit with sacred scripture. I can pray in union with his mother. Or I can do like the old man in John Vianney's church. I can look at him and let him look at me. We know who that is in the Eucharist. Nothing will come before it. And so I urge you, I'd like to have four people for each hour as scheduled adorers. We have captains for the times, and so that if for some reason one week you're away or you can't make it, you just call your captain. They make sure the other people are going to be there. But I urge you to prayerfully consider it. And if you're ready to commit, one of the sign-up lists is here today. Our parish's way of making reparation for this sacrilege. 
to educate ourselves, and to come before the Lord. Now, for some, Thursdays don't work. And so, we're doing some wonderful things at our school. Some great things are happening. The Lord has made some little miracles occurring right here on Austin Street, for which I am so grateful. I'm going to ask you Monday night to come and pray with us about that. But I'm announcing today, in light of this terrible tragedy of the Black Mass, that we will begin having a monthly nocturnal adoration, a time to make reparation to the heart of Christ for the sacrileges and the outrages. And so beginning this coming September, on September 5th, the first Friday of the month, when Jesus asked St. Margaret Mary to ask all people of faith to make reparation, to come to his heart, to draw near to the Eucharist. It also happens to be this year the Feast of Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who used to say that everybody in her order had to begin their day with an hour before Jesus, because only if you can see Jesus hidden in the Eucharist are you going to see him in the distressing disguise of the poor and in your everyday life. So what better day than the Feast of Blessed Mother Teresa? And we're going to do it in our little chapel. And all I'm asking is when you come, when you go in, ask God to bless what's been going on there now for 146 years. And then pray whatever you want. So I need a Doris for once a month. Can you make a once a month commitment? A Friday night alternative, first Friday of every month. We're going to have mass at 7 o'clock in the little chapel. And you saw in the bulletin that I've renamed it the John, St. John Paul II Chapel. We'll have mass at 7 o'clock on first Fridays. Then the Blessed Sacrament will be exposed after and remain exposed until midnight for us to come and to adore. And I hope that it will grow so that we can continue it then through the night until the first Saturday morning. I think we should be able to be there by the first of the year. That's my challenge. So the other list, the short list, is for first Friday. So if you could do once a month, between 8 p.m. and midnight, sign up. And if we fall short somewhere, um, Joe, who lives in our Nazareth house, and myself are committing ourselves to fill in the gaps. It's going to happen. It's important that it happens. There's a lot of things our parish is facing. I inaugurated this when I became pastor almost 20 years ago in my previous parish. Great graces flowed. I can't think of a better time than now. And so that's what some people say. Others, as we know all too well from the tragedies of this week, but the question is, who do you say that I am? They say, you're a God who wants us to purify everything, to kill in your name, to wage jihad, to send women out to massacre people, because we believe that if you're killed by a woman, you won't go to heaven. We don't want any of those we murder to go to heaven. This extreme misinterpretation of Islam answers the question, who do you say that I am? You're a God of vengeance. You're a God of limits. You're a God of cruelty. You're a God of hatred. Just this week, parents, James Foley said, he gave his life trying to expose people to the suffering people in Syria and Iraq. His father, just two days ago, said, it's not difficult to find solace at this point. We know he's in God's hands, and we know he's done God's work. James Foley himself, when he was captured in Libya in the year 2011, said, all that surrounded me didn't make sense, but faith did. No, brothers and sisters, we can either be scared, or we can complain, or we can do something. We can pray as never before. We can then ask ourselves the question of who we say God is and then ask, are our lives reflecting that? Or are there the pockets and exclusion and the isms that keep us from one another? It's a time for personal renewal, parish renewal, national renewal, prompted by this tragedy around the world. Pope John Paul II once said, in referring to this gospel, after they had relayed the various opinions people have, Jesus asks them directly, but who do you say that I am? We all know this moment, says John Paul, in which it's no longer sufficient to speak about Jesus, 
by repeating what others have said. You must say what you think, what you have come to know, not quote an opinion. You must bear witness, feel committed by the witness you have borne, and carry this commitment to its extreme consequences. The best friends, followers, and apostles of Christ have always been those who heard within them one day the definitive, inescapable question, but before which all others become secondary and derivative. All other questions become secondary and derivative. For you, who am I? In our community, in response to this great tragedy, I invite you to join us Tuesday night. It is the feast of Our Lady of Częstochowa, one of the oldest images of Our Lady known to Christianity. The holy icon is venerated here in our church. If you get close to that icon, you notice she has slash marks on her face. The icon was attacked. It was an object of hatred when the Germans invaded Poland, when the Russians invaded Poland, when the communists tried to stamp out the name of Christ. For hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, this has been the rallying point. The old insult, your mother wears army boots, is true when you talk about Our Lady of Częstochowa. Mary puts on the army boots. She has marched with her people into battle. She has brought them to the way of peace. And so I beg you, Tuesday night, unless you have other plans, And if you have other plans, cancel them. Tuesday night at 6.30, join us as we pray together the scriptural rosary for peace, for the end of such satanic influence, and for a re-appreciation of the true identity of God. At 6.30, we'll pray the scriptural rosary, and then it will be followed by a beautiful sung mass in honor of the Feast of Our Lady of Częstochowa. At the conclusion of the Mass, we'll have special prayers for peace and for vocations. And if you remember, in a few weeks, it'll be three years that I arrived as your pastor. I consecrated this parish and myself to her before that image that I brought with me from my childhood parish. So I hope you'll come. It's in the bulletin. Tuesday, 6.30, the Rosary, 7 o'clock, Solemn Holy Mass. On the weekend of the 13th and 14th of September, we will join with Catholic parishes all over the diocese in putting out free will offering baskets to support the work of Catholic Relief Services. Catholic Relief Services are on the front lines of helping so many of these displaced people, whether it be the medical needs or the physical needs or the psychological needs. Catholic Relief Service representatives are putting themselves on the line as did James Foley. Some of them have already been killed in this effort and yet the others do not retreat. I invite you to spend these next few weeks considering what you can do as a tangible expression of help. But for now, in the midst of all of this, all of this overwhelming tragedy, hear the words of John Paul. St. Paul says, where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. That means when it gets as bad as it can get, for those who draw closer to God, it can get better than it's ever been before. May his words lead each of us to adoration, to prayer, to changes, to action. John Paul said once and says now from heaven, the best friends, followers, and apostles of Christ have always been those who heard within them one day the definitive, inescapable question, who do you say that I am? before which all other questions become secondary and derivative. For you, who am I? I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. With dependence on no one and no thing more than upon God, let us bring our needs. For our Holy Father, successor of Peter, may his words and witness compel many to more authentic gospel living, especially those who seek to minister to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ability to declare who Jesus is to us personally, not with words alone, but through our lifestyle, values, priorities, and choices, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders to act with prudence and justice, for an end to violence, brutality, terrorism, and the slaughter of so many innocent victims throughout our world. For the eternal repose of the soul of James Foley and for the comfort of his family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the conversion of those who have embraced a way of violence and death in the name of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a happy and fruitful school year for all students and families, teachers and support staff, and especially for Susan Graham as she guides our parish school into a promising future in her ministry as principal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we carry in our hearts today and for all our departed loved ones, especially Andre Deshaies, for whom this Mass is offered, may we all be united in the merciful heart of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All this we ask in the confidence of faith, pouring out our hearts to the wounded heart of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing number 442, How Can I Keep From Singing? My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the real though far off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm well, to that rock I'm clinging, since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? singing. No storm can shake my 
keep from singing. What though the tempest round me roar, I hear the truth it liveth. What though the darkness round me close, songs in the Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord, again for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you've given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the saints and angels, we exalt and bless your name, and we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day, and I will And I will 
shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will
There's only a handful of tickets left. If you haven't got a 2020 club ticket and you're interested, you can see Joe Mitchell after Mass outside. Also notice in a couple of weeks there's going to be a yard sale if you'd like to uh, rent some space or have donations, either picked up at your home or bring them. Check out the car boot sale that's announced in the bulletin. The proceeds help us to continue to expand the programs we offer for the youth of our parish. Hold the bulletin carefully, there's an insert. One side tells you about the phenomenal parish mission that is just two weeks away as we welcome nationally known author and speaker, Father Larry Richards, for what will certainly be a faith lift experience for all of us. So I urge you to invite friends, to bring family, as we gather each night in September 8, 9, 10, 11 for Parish Mission 2014 with Father Larry Richards. On the back of that is a preview of the upcoming Christmas festival and some of the needs. As I mentioned in the homily, when we have adoration, everybody can come at any time, but we need to have scheduled adorers. If you could be a scheduled adorer, please take the time. The marble top table in front of Our Lady's altar has both the sign-ups for Thursday. We begin that adoration on September 11th, and the other one for once a month, the first Fridays in the evening. Please be sure to print your name and phone number very clearly. You'll be contacted with the name and phone number of your captain for times that you might have to uh, let them know that you can't make it. And then more details on that are in the bulletin. On Monday, we begin the 146th academic year at our school. So this year, we're going to begin with Holy Mass. So I urge you, if you can come Monday night, 6 o'clock, we'll commission our new principal, our teachers, the school board, and kick off the year with a Mass of the Holy Spirit. So please plan to join us if you can. Show tangible support for our school uh, Monday night, 6 o'clock, here in Immaculate. And then, as I mentioned in the homily, Tuesday night, we pray in particular on the feast of Our Lady of Trenstahova for our world in all of its crisis. We pray for vocations to, to rise up from this community, heroic witnesses for Christ, both men and women. 6.30 rosary, followed by solemn holy mass at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, the feast of the Black Madonna. There's a lot more. It's all in the bulletin. I thank you for your patience today. Uh, usually in warmer weather, the message takes a little less time, but the weight of this week uh, would have made that a neglect to not take the time to truly have us reflect on what ramification, where sin has abounded, how can grace abound? Starting here, here, and working its way out. Let's pray for one another. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth glorifying the Lord with your life. Please join together in singing number 417, Church of God, Elect and Glorious. Church of God, elect and glorious, holy nation, chosen race, called as God's own special people, royal priests and heirs of grace. Know the purpose of your calling show to all God's mighty deeds tell of love that knows no limits grace which meets all human needs God has called you out of darkness 
into his most marvelous light. Rod is true to life within you. Turn your blindness into sight. Let your light shine around you that God's name God's heart of love.